Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Brad Lone Wolf, and today I'm going to be looking at uh, it's going to be a walking pole actually. Now, I have done videos on walking poles before, um, you'll find them in the in the playlist uh unless i remember to link them at the end of this video which let's face it i'm crap i probably won't uh but today this the pole i'm looking at is at the cheaper end of the scale the ones i looked at before they were kind of a mid-range pole um whereas this one is towards the cheaper end of the the scale and again that's obviously budgetary reasons uh the the common pros with having a pole or a couple of poles still stand, however, um, even with the cheaper ones. Um, the main difference is in the construction, is in the materials that it's made out of and um, the the way that it actually supports, supports you as you walk along. So today's pole is going to be this. Uh, it's going to be the Eurohike Expedition Pole. I know that every, I know that the word is backwards, but it's the Eurohike Expedition Pole. And swap now to uh, a better view for you, uh, so that uh, we can run through run through the features on this pole and uh, whether it's any good or not. Okie dokie. So this is the pole, as you can appreciate. It's actually fairly long so it's not going to uh, get in the camera completely uh, all of it's not going to get in the com camera completely but that's by the by um, I'll move it around as I need to so first thing you need to know about the pole is that it's made out of aluminium uh, and it extends to I believe it is 140 centimeters overall or sorry 135 centimeters actually um obviously it's a standard telescopic pole we've probably all seen one of these before uh probably all used one as well um or if you haven't you can find out the advantage of using one uh, as we go along so as i say aluminium pole plastic grip um plastic grip with a strap not best strap in the world and again i'll come on to it uh, when we get there and rubber tip that can be removed for uh, added um, stability on loose ground the rubber cap obviously goes over the end for when you're walking on pavement so with the, the other the extra features that you get in this uh, there is actually a, I don't know if you can see it, but there is actually a compass on the top there. And there is also standard, but useful feature, little mud basket there as well. Right, so let's take the packaging off and we'll go into more detail uh, about each section of this pole. Oh no, it's a scary knife time. Ah... Most of the packaging off. Take the mud basket off as well, because why not? Put that one aside for a second. Right, so we'll start at the top, we'll start at the grip, at the handle. As I say, this is a plastic grip. Um, it's not the best in the world. And the better grips are rubber and then cork. Uh, they help absorb sweat and they're more comfortable in the hand. But the good thing with this is this is um, a semi-ergonomic grip. So when you grip it, it is a more natural feel in the hand. The strap is bog standard nylon. Nothing special about it. Um, the Obviously, the idea is you put it around your wrist and uh, you're less likely to lose your pole if you drop it. Now, there is a way, I'm not going to show it on this video, but there is a way that you can actually use the strap for extra support if you need it. The worst part about this strap, however, is the buckle. Now, you'll see on uh, better, better range poles that there is no buckle 
Um, well, there's no plastic buckle like this on there for two reasons. One, it's a weak point. Um, so if you put a lot of pressure on this, could end up snapping. But more importantly, it can end up rubbing on your wrist, um, which you really, really don't want because it will end up obviously irritating and you really don't want that. However, the fact that it's there uh, as a feature uh, is always a bonus. It's always a plus. Just not the best in this case. As I mentioned on the top, there is a compass. Completely pointless, completely useless. It does not point north. Moving on to the shafts. As I've already mentioned, they are made of aluminium. Again, you can get them made out of carbon fibre, which makes them lighter. However, it pushes the price up. Most poles, most walking poles are made out of aluminium. And obviously, depending on the length and depending on the thickness of that aluminium will depend on their weight. Now, this one, as you can probably see, I don't know if you can see that. In the, in the top there, that actually says anti-shock. There's actually an anti-shock system uh, in the uh, on these poles. I will demonstrate that now. Or I'll show you that now. So if I take the pole out. Right, sorry about that, guys. I lost uh, a couple of things happened. I lost my train of thought, so I've started again. Uh, going back to the, the shaft on these poles, these are made out of aluminium. You can get them made out of carbon fibre, but that does increase the weight and obviously increase the price as well. Most poles, most trekking poles are actually made out of aluminium, depending on the length and the thickness will depend on the weight. Most of them are kind of around about this weight anyway, um, so there's not much in it in that sense. On this pole in particular, um, in fact on a lot of poles, you'll see that there is this label which is anti-shock. Now I will, uh, I'll open this up in a second and show you exactly how the anti-shock works. Now there's actually a couple of different methods. Some are better, one is better than the other, um, but one is kind of more rugged than the other. So if I take the pole out, Put that to one side for a second. You can see that the pole, uh, the anti-shock in this pole is a nice simple spring. Now, to be honest, spring is actually more reliable than the other system, which um, it tends to be kind of a. I suppose the best way to describe it is kind of a pneumatic system. It's, mm, it's not. That, yeah, that's the best way to describe it. It's not quite a pneumatic system, but it's the best way to describe it. The thing with the spring system is you can, you can lock it out. Uh, so it doesn't doesn't spring if you don't want it to, which is fine. Um, doesn't have as much dampening in it as the pneumatic type does. Um, but it is more rugged and it's easier to replace and cheaper as well. So not always a bad thing to go for the slightly older version of something. This The anti-shock version of these bowls or anti-shock poles dates back at least 20 years now. Um, and there's no, like I say, there's nothing wrong with springs. Um, it's actually, I personally think they're better just because they're a bit more rugged and less to go wrong. Now, as I say, you can lock the springing system out on this. Let me just... So you, you won't be able to hear it, but if I do a little twist like that, then the anti-shock is now off. If I twist it like that, you can see that the pole goes in and out. 
when you're walking with these poles, the anti-shock there, the anti-shock is there to dampen any shock coming off the bottom of the pole. It is not there to be used actively. So you should not be pushing down on the pole as you walk because you will end up wearing out the spring and end up potentially breaking your pole. Moving on down, the same system for locking the pole is in the bottom third as well. He says he struggles to undo the bottom third. There we go. So it's the same system for locking the pole out down at the bottom. There's nothing, nothing special about this pole, uh, nothing special about the, the bottom third um, in terms of the pole, in terms of the construction. Um, it is just a, a box standard telescopic pole with the twist opening and closing. All right, moving on a little bit further down to the end. The mud basket. I would always recommend putting your mud basket on, even if you don't do a lot of walking in mud or along muddy paths. Reason being is it's there, so you might as well use it. Um, it also gives you something else, a little bit extra to grip onto. You can get snow baskets as well. Not that many people will appreciate, not many people are going to need the snow baskets, but you can get them and they screw on just like I did with the mud basket there. I've already explained the rubber cap. Um, it's always useful to have the rubber cap on it's easier to take the rubber cap off and put it in your pocket rather than forget your rubber cap now the bottom tip there that is designed to be worn out um obviously not on purpose just as a wet general wear and tear thing that is designed to be worn out however it will wear out quicker on concrete than it will on paths which is why you use the rubber cap on it now you might be asking if i've already got a pair of poles what am i going to be using this one for well good question one of the things i do with uh, my some of my bushcraft sessions is i have a survival scenario and a piece of the equipment that uh, is an option within that survival scenario is a walking pole. I've been using my mid-range poles, polar, uh, as part of that equipment. This is now going to go and replace that, which is why I've got uh, a cheap, a cheap pole rather than a mid-range pole. Uh, the equipment that they use obviously doesn't have to be expensive. It's just there as an aid memoir, if you like. Um, also gives an idea of how much something can weigh. Not that this weighs a lot. Would I recommend a pole like this to you? Yes, I would. Even one as cheap as this. Even, even though I've pointed out quite a lot of cons of this pole, I would still recommend a pole like this. In fact, I would recommend two. Reason being is the weight that you can take off of your back over an, uh, a full day walk is significant. And you will notice the difference. Even over a couple of hours, you would notice the difference between a pole like this and not having a pole at all, even on a short day walk. It's not a essential piece of kit, but it is a very highly recommended piece of kit. So I hope that helps. Hope that gives you an idea of an overview of not just this particular pole, but trek trekking poles in general. Thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.